Boom. It's late December here, guys, in Tennessee. It is 35 degrees up. We they got this gun built. We've been working on this for a while, but I'm a stickler for long range shooting. I love I love target shooting. I love long range shooting. The science behind it, the math behind it, just like scratches my itch. I've been doing this for a long time now, since I was like probably 10 years old, been into this category. Um, so we got a new gun here, the Bagara HMR B14 Wilderness Carbon uh, in the 6.5 Creedmoor. The goal today is really to get into the nuts and bolts of sighting the rifle. We're gonna go out this afternoon and we're gonna see, I've never personally shot a deer with a 6.5 Creedmoor. I've heard a lot of hate on it. I've heard a lot of positive. It's just like a, it's a bougie round right now. From a target perspective, I think it's awesome. I've shot targets with it, but I've never owned one personally and I've never shot an animal with one personally. And so we're gonna go test that out. But today, right now, what we're doing is getting this gun sighted in, how we're gonna set this gun up from an MOA perspective. We're sighting it at exactly 100 yards right now on the bench, getting fully comfortable so that we can get, we're running Night Force Optics right now, get that fully dialed with this gun. Bagara recommends a break-in period for it. So we're gonna be shooting 50 rounds. We're gonna do a lot of cleaning. Uh, and we're gonna just kind of walk through the steps of why we do things the way we do it. Um, everyone has their pre preferences. It's more of an art than a science, I feel like. Uh, and so what I like to do with the gun, and we're just gonna walk through those steps, get it all set up for you. All right, new gun for me. I'm always gonna get comfortable with that trigger and the position that I feel comfortable shooting. So do not have a dry round. And so I just like to get comfortable. It's like shooting a bow. Everyone spends so much time getting your anchor point and all that. No one ever talks about getting your anchor point set for the gun and how you're gonna rest your head and get everything your cheek piece styled. A lot of people don't have these, you know, the adjustables and all that, but get to where it's repetitive, just like shooting a bow. You get your anchor point, get your head, your arms, everything positioned the exact same way. You have to do the same for a gun when you're shooting at longer ranges, uh, getting that. So I like to get everything dialed and then I will get fully comfortable with that trigger. And so just exactly the pull mechanism, the feeling, where it sits on your finger, uh, and all get personal, get intimate with that trigger. Uh, so that you, when it comes time to shoot, you're not jerking, you're not you know doing weird pulls, you're not yanking to one side, because at 100 yards, you're not gonna notice it. At 200, you might notice it a little bit. Uh, but 300, 400, 500, you're gonna start, if you have a horrible trigger pull, it's start gonna get exposed at that point. Anything beyond 500, you're not gonna hit anything. If you have a horrible trigger pull, if you're not consistently anchored, not consistently set up correctly, at those longer ranges, you're just not gonna pull it. Uh, and so for us, getting comfortable is a huge aspect with the gun. I will not take a gun unless I've shot, for this type of gun, 100 rounds, minimum 100 rounds, where you've gotten absolutely comfortable, you feel everything about it. So we're making, this is, for a lot of people, this might be like overkill, but we're making micro adjustments with quarter MOA adjustments, just working our way in. My goal is by the end of this, I want three to five rounds. I want to blow that hole out. If I can do that, that's when I'm confident in the gun. Feel good that I'm dialed, got everything set anchor wise. Um, I don't think that's unrealistic at 100 yards with the optics and the governor running and the ammo. You should be able to do that. I say that now, hopefully I get it done. I don't know about this a lot of times, but I'm gonna follow what they recommended. And Bagara recommends as a break-in for this carbon barrel. And so we're gonna push 50 rounds through here and we've been cleaning, it's fine. Uh, 
cleaning it every the first five shots like every, after every shot and then after that every five I normally clean every three to five one thing that I've noticed with this gun just in the because we're having to clean it every three to five rounds the barrel does not get hot which is abnormal I mean it is 35 degrees out 32 degrees out so you would expect it to be a little bit cooler but still uh, carbon barrels are ideal for hunting because of the weight reduction but from a heat management perspective carbon is more conductive with heat and so it should be longer to cool than a straight stainless steel metal barrel uh, without the carbon on it and so we're gonna follow the guideline to keep cleaning this gun over and over and over again to get the full break in uh, and make sure we don't get everything we can out of this gun. For all the haters out there, the people, I don't even haters, but there's a lot of opinion needs on this round. I lived and died by 30 caliber bullets for the last 15 years. Shot it every, for everything, deer, elk, everything. Uh, and so I've lived, I've lived and died by the 300 Jarrett and then the 3378 Weatherby. Uh, before that, uh, 300 Winchester. Before that, 300 Weatherby. I've gone through a huge evolution uh, of my 300s, and they're awesome. They're great for long range, great performance at those longer edges. But when you're getting that five, 600, 700 yard type shots, you got the muzzle velocity and the energy down there to kill something big. But man, now that we're spending more time just hunting deer a lot, those things are punishing. And when you're up in a saddle, uh, just it's just punishing to shoot those things those 30 caliber bullets when they're lighter uh for the saddle hunting aspect carrying them around and everything that recoil is just yeah it's punishing uh and you i at least it, i noticed that i start developing subtle flinches when you just live and die by these larger caliber guns and so i always like to dial it back and so i'm trying the 6.5 creed more i'm going to make that my gun for the de facto future uh, and see, but right now, like this gun doesn't recoil. I can watch the bullet go through. I can see the arc on these things. It's really, it's like a video game. It's straight up out of Call of Duty from when I was little. Uh, it's a really cool run gun. It's fun to shoot. I can shoot it all day. And I think that's something that's missed in a lot of people when they're giving recommendations on rounds. Get a gun that's fun to shoot. Don't get that 3378 has the most insane specs for uh, velocity, energy, flatness, all that stuff. But that 3378 bullet, man, it's like four times the amount of powder than what I'm pushing right now uh, with a twice the size of the bullet. Like it's just a wicked, wicked round. Drops everything in its tracks, punishing, but it's also punishing on me. So last bit of information, I think we're dialed. At this point now, it's just cleaning, breaking, keep shooting rounds, but I think the scope's pretty much good to go. I like to, because I have full MOA adjustment reticles, I'm gonna side in at 100 yards. I've already pulled my ballistic coefficients in my MOA chart. I keep that taped at the bottom of my barrel, done. And uh, gives me all my adjustments that I need to pull from an MOA and a mill perspective. Uh, for my gun if I'm just shooting a plain Jane deer hunting rifle standard scope I got to screw the caps on and off to get all my adjustments I'm probably gonna side in at 200 yards dead on at 200 yards or fine two inches high uh, depending on most guns nowadays give you the bullet drop and I would side it for dead on at 100 yards or uh, Dead on for 200 or this gun, the Cree Moore, this one says it's 1.9 inches high at 100 yards. Make that adjustment, get comfortable there and shoot it out. But for what we're trying to do with this for long range shooting, target shooting, all that, the fun stuff, uh, everything starts with 100 yards dead on. Dead, dead on. Uh, you wanna make sure you're at 100 yards, you're not at 110, you're not at 105. You want to make sure you are shooting 
at 100 yards so that when you start pushing uh, out to 1,000 yards, like we'll get out there, put a 12 inch plate out there, this gun should be able to pull it. And uh, to do that, you gotta have all your foundational items set straight. So we're gonna set, set up for 100 yards, dead on. Once we're good to go, feel comfortable, we'll pop these caps off, set that to our zero, and uh, we'll know. Always take, take it back to zero. If you screw around with it, scopes get moved, that is your zero. You're good to go at that point. Uh, you're good to go, yeah, it's fun. This is a fun gun to shoot. Recommend to anyone, fun gun.